Hello and welcome. It is another edition, season three, the Adam Jones podcast presented by the Baltimore Banner. I'm Jerry Coleman. He's a five-time MLB All-Star, Adam Jones. Today, we have reached a milestone, episode 75, AJ, and we're joined by Coach John Harbaugh of the Ravens. Wow, 75, and the coach of the Ravens. Adam and I will also talk about who's in charge when it comes to the infield and outfield questions that Coach Harbaugh doesn't have to deal with because there's so many collisions in baseball, just <laughs> like in football. And during our Baltimore and Beyond segment, we're going to talk after we're done with Coach Harbaugh about how baseball is battling Coach Harbaugh's sport when it comes to the postseason in terms of the month of October. It used to belong to baseball, not so much anymore. And of course, a chance to win a $50 gift card from Lido Pizza and Socially Speaking. But Coach Harbaugh brought to you by our friends at Jimmy's Famous Seafood, which he is quite familiar with, I know. Coach, great to have you back. I reserve most of my questions for this. Is why I don't ask many questions during the press conferences. Uh, we have not had many two-time guests on this podcast, so you should feel special. But then again, you haven't done many podcasts more than once either, so we feel very special. <laughs> anyway. So, to be on for the 75th, Jerry, that is an unbelievable honor. And you two guys, I love both you guys, so... I couldn't be more uh, more more glad to be on here with you guys. Finally, you and I have been trying to get this for the last month or so. So it's awesome to get a chance to to see you again. And I never get to see Adam. So seeing you, Adam, it's, it's a joy, man. I appreciate it. All right, I'll begin. As everyone knows or should, only Mike Tomlin's been coaching in the NFL longer these days than you. Uh, it's a 12-month business as you enter your 17th season in Baltimore. How you were still trying to avoid burnout, how do you keep – fresh for yourself and your team every day and not trying to be redundant? Yeah, it's a great question. It's, uh, it's honestly, it's just, it's really not that hard because you got a bunch of guys you like being around every day. Keeps you young, man. I mean, I'm around, you know, 21, 22, up, we get some 33, 34 year old players and young coaches. And I think everybody feels that just that energy. You walk in the building every single day and you're, you're kind of on a shared purpose. You got a mission in front of you. You got a bunch of guys full of energy that want to be good, not without problems. You know, things happen. There's always big challenges, but that also kind of keeps you going. And then just finding a way to say things that kind of relate to what's going on. I, you know, to me, it's never about, I can never remember what I said, you know, a week or two ago. There are principles. You stick to the principles. Now, those are written in stone for sure. But methods, how you draw up a play or how you respond to a, to a, to a policy or whatever, I mean, Shoot, Adam, we travel and, and the guys can wear shorts and sweatsuits now. 15 yeah, years ago, that was, that was frowned on, you know, back when you yeah. started playing. You very started true. Dress, right? So those those kind of things can always change. And then just how you relate to guys. I still don't know most of the music, to be honest. I, I like to play the old school stuff, you know. I'm going back <laughs> to throwing Motown up there. But they, there we go. You know, these guys recognize good quality music as well, I think. So they like some of the old stuff. Well, I mean, you are as – old as their parents so in a way they did grow up listening to that kind of music just being played around i grew up on prince michael jackson mm -hmm. uh the 80s obviously the oj's and all those kind of those musics just being played around the house but how does those young guys keep you keep you young obviously i mean you're still young you look great i know you're in great shape um but those young guys you got 21 22 year olds with energy that is i wish i can't even think about being 21 in a year Anymore. I have no idea what that even feels like. But how do they keep you young? Yeah, just the uh, the idea that, you know, you're kind of living with them. I mean, you meet people where they're at. So for me, you know, as a coach, you're trying to do everything you can to have the best team you can have. That's what your responsibility is, is to, to serve uh, the owner, the fans, the people that care about the team in a way that uh, creates the very best team out of, out of the players that you have. And then with the player, you know, you're responsible to relate to the player in a way that helps him be the very best player he can be. I mean, these guys, careers matter to them, Adam. You know how it is. And you have kids now. And, and when you were growing up, your parents. But, hey, what did the coach say to you? What did you guys do today at practice? How did you do? How many hits did you have? Did you make any plays on the ball if you're a defensive back? Did you complete passes? How would you do in the red zone period? You know, I know as a dad, I'm always asking my daughter, you know, how did practice go today? How many goals did you score? Did you get some assists? All those kind of things that matter to you, you realize as a coach that you're serving that player and their family to have a career. You know, that your their career should be as important to me as it is to them because that's my job. That's what you are as a coach. You're a teacher. You're a servant. You try to do that. So, man, so in that sense, you're, related, you're, you're talking to them. You're with them. You're in there with them. You're living their life with them. That's what keeps you young because you're kind of 
putting yourself where they're at. And I want to ask about that. It was um, you obviously this is the time where you see these young receivers getting their paydays and quarterbacks getting their paydays. Yeah. How hard is that? You've been you've been being around so long. You've seen entire careers of players. You've also seen shortened careers of players. You've seen guys there three or four years, pro bowlers with you. They got to get their payday somewhere else. Yeah. How hard is that part where you you build a relationship with them? You learn the family. There's barbecues. There's events. Yeah. And then, obviously, they uh, depart and go somewhere else. One of the craziest things about the whole business, because you do want to see people uh, meet their financial goal. I mean, you want to see people get paid. I mean, that's like this is pro sports, and you want to see it. And the numbers, I can remember – way back when I first started, like we'd be talking about a contract that would come up and, and Steve would be like, I can't believe these guys are, you know, this position, I can't believe tight ends are making this much. You know, I can't believe quarterbacks are making this much. That was like, maybe a quarterback was making 5 million a year. You know, it's like, this is crazy. <laughs> you know, uh, it's like 5 million a year for a quarterback, you know, times 10, you know, and that's, mm. and that's going to, that's becoming not even the top number anymore. So it keeps going up. Your generation made more than the generation before you, those guys that, kind of came up and paved the way and you respected those guys but the generation after you Adam and the, and the next one coming even after that when you're a grandparent to these guys so to speak as a player they're gonna make so you had a, you had you had a huge deal but that deal now doesn't look huge in retrospect right that's just kind mm -hmm. of the world we live in so um we just have to just I always tell Steve and we talk about him kind of laugh I say just please let's not be shocked at what the next player signs for and when a receiver starts getting 30 million it's it is shocking but now a couple guys got 30 million. So, you know, then you just have to decide for us. It's like, okay, how do we want to spend? It's not so much the number, it's the percentage of the cap. You know, where do you want to allocate the percentage of the cap? And one of the things that we start with in this whole process is basically, is you should start with the players that you have. It's there, there's a position part to it, but there's also a good player. You know, Ray Lewis was an inside linebacker and Ed Reed was a safety. Those are not positions normally that people want to pay defensive players to play, but oh, you're not going to pay. Ray Lewis and Ed Reed, they're the two of the best maybe ever at their position. So we were blessed with those two players. So, yeah, you want to pay your best players. Roquan's kind of an example of that as well. All right. Here's a, a warning. Hardball question coming. Hardball question coming because, as the Harbaugh say it, I'm a pundit. And that word dates back to what? I think the 20s or 30s. I love when your dad calls me a pundit. But I got to go back and ask one question about the AFC championship last year and see how much you have gone back and looked at the game, dissected it. You know what the claim is. You guys didn't run the ball enough. And yeah. some some think you guys panicked a little too early. I mean, your response to all that in retrospect months later, and how much do you feel like you're going to have to address this going forward? It was such a painful loss for everyone in Baltimore. And I know it was equally for you and your family. Yeah, no question. I mean, all, all true. Uh, yeah, we looked at starting the, the second day. I mean, I was in the game, you're trying to process and try to find a way to win the game. So during the game itself, you know, uh, you're just trying to call the plays. Uh, we're trying to make the plays that we can. And really, honestly, if we make the plays, we win the game. So, uh, yeah, did we run the ball enough? Heck no, no way, especially against that defense at that time. And the plan was to go in there and run the ball a lot more than we did. Uh, so, yeah, we got behind, but that doesn't mean you stop running the ball. And I don't think the plan was to stop running the ball. It certainly wasn't. But we didn't have runs to get to in the system or game plan at that time that that fit what they were doing. So that's on us. We weren't prepared uh, to run the ball against what they were showing us. Our answers were to throw the ball in that particular plan, and we didn't. We just didn't get it done. We we turned the ball over. And we didn't. We didn't make the plays down the field we needed to make. If we had, we would. If we hadn't turned the ball over, we'd have made those plays. We would have won the game. The conversation wouldn't have been had. But that's not the big question. The big question is is like going forward. How do we take the next step in this offense to make sure that we have the answers we need? In other words, when we want to run the ball and they present us with certain things, how are we going to be, make sure we're able to do that? How do we build the offense in a way that has the answers that we need when the defense presents them, no matter what game it is, when it is, what time of the year it is? And I think we've done a great job of that. I mean, I'm really excited about what we put together offensively from a system standpoint going into year two. All of us have been a part of it. Todd's done a great job. Lamar's done a great job. All the coaches have been fantastic. Uh, Josh Johnson's out there also in OTAs running it really well. And I would say we put it more in the quarterback's hands in terms of being able to get us to certain plays against certain looks, run and pass, when we want them in real time after we're at the line of scrimmage. So that's a big part of what we're doing, Jerry, and that's our responsibility to do it. And 
you try to you try to get better, man. I mean, you try to kind of do an after action report and say, listen, that wasn't good enough. You know, we didn't have what we needed. We were good enough to win the game. And uh, we didn't have all the things, all the answers that we needed to have in that game. And we got to learn from that and get better. And that's I do think it's part of the process because the game's always changing. And so you've always got to try to do your best to stay with it and stay ahead of it. And you do your best to do that. And I think we've done a good job, but we're going to find out here pretty quick when they start playing games again. Yeah. And now you have the addition of Derrick Henry and uh, you had a few weeks now to absorb his talent, which you've seen from the other sideline. This combination of agility and size is something like I've never seen before. What is your impression early on? And is this sort of like with Odell Beckham Jr. last year, a one year, maybe two year situation? And we'll see how the first year goes. Yeah, we'll see how we'll see how it's always, you know what, this is a, it's a it's a not for long league proposition. I mean, it's just the way it is in every pro sport. Uh, we're concerned about the next practice, the next game, uh, the next season in front of us. But, you know, I'd like to see Derek be here for the rest of his career. I mean, that would be a goal that I would have for sure. And I think he's got plenty left in the tank to do it. You're right. Everything you're saying, you've watched him practice, Jerry, you've seen it. Uh, he's going to he's going to be who he is. And we need to make sure that we allow him to be who he is, you know, the way we put the offense together. And that's what we're really planning on doing. I mean, I see him being a huge part of the offense next year. How's his attitude and reputation uh, rubbed off on younger guys? You know, all guys run the, the linemen who know that I got a tank behind me now. You know what I mean? Again, we've had good running backs. So let's not, you know, with Dobbins and many others, this guy's a little bit different. This is a Hummer putting, pulling his way through. You, you're right about that, Adam, and you know him. I mean, his mindset, his attitude, his professionalism, it's second to none, and he's as good as anybody I've ever seen in the building, on the practice field, studying the night before, texting his coach, calling his coach, got questions, back walks back there, asks a question, wants to know, and then you ask him a question, hey, what would you see there? He, I saw this. I saw the backer jump over the top. I saw the guard get up to that level. That's why, that's why I slid backside, or that's why I bounced frontside, or whatever it is. I mean, he is a student of the game, you know, and, and in the weight room, in the conditioning part of it, how hard he practices, that rubs off. Like you said, the younger guys definitely rubs off on him. Like you said, the older guys, man, they really respect that. He was 30 years old working at the level he's working at. It, uh, you know, it's just what a leader does, I think. The great players do it that way. Wanted to ask you about the Harbaugh Coaching Academy. Of course, you recently held a press conference about it. Uh, I want to know how many Harbaugh's are going to be involved because they're spread out throughout the country uh, in, in both conferences of the NFL and some yeah. still outside the NFL. Will Coach Belichick be involved? Because a lot of people thought you two were mortal enemies, which obviously is not the case. Yeah, HarbaughCoachingAcademy.org, Jerry, .org. I always get that wrong. I can never remember the .org part of it. You keep saying .com, don't you? I do say .com. It should be .org. It's because that's a... That's how it works with the charity, you know, the, yep. the, the nonprofit. So uh, it's a nonprofit. Just the the whole idea basically is to is to do what you what you guys are doing, what Adam, what you do all the time. It's just to kind of pour back into people, especially it's coaching, but also athletics is a metaphor for life. You know, all the lessons that you learn in athletics or in parenting. My dad talks about the parenting all the time, and how do you you know how do you talk to your kids or or how do you take take your kids and approach them, and whether it's sports or music or any other school, whatever it is, you know, I, I think all these topics come up that people just want to talk about, you know, and get a chance to just have a conversation about. And if you can have a conversation sort of with Bill Belichick or Sean McVay or, uh, or, or Dr. Jeffrey Ling about, you know, the challenges of playing football when you're 10, 11, 12 years older in high school or whatever. I mean, people just want to like hear about that stuff. And, and you get on there and it doesn't, it doesn't torture you with some kind of a a 45 minute lecture, you know, you can get on there for two or three minutes and hear about a topic. Uh, I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. It's a lot of work has gone in by a lot of really neat people that care and do it just, just because they want to, you know, check it out. I think you'll be impressed. So, so it's Jim, it's Jay, it's Jack, it's Tom Crean, and then outside the family as well. Yeah. Kind of like our extended coaching family, you know, I mean, I want to get, I want to get, I want to get Adam on there, you know, we sit down and talk about the baseball part of it, you know, talk about kids playing baseball if you could do that, you know, and, yeah, hey, what would you sure. tell parents about baseball? And, and my kid really, you know, and even the specifics of it, uh, we want to talk about lacrosse. We want to talk about all those things, Jerry. Um, sport, let's talk about sports casting. Maybe there's kids that want to get into that. You know, how do you do that? What what motivates you to do that? And then if you want to do it, how do you get started? You know, whatever. That, it's just kind of make it kind of that kind of a, a fun thing. Like I always wondered that is like I've done a lot of camps 
and you know my a big mission of mine was getting young black players to play baseball mm-hmm. i would do a lot of camps and i would see young black players that might be 13 14 maybe a little too old to play baseball and i'm like bro you guys you fast run track why not try lacrosse why not try hockey why not try uh soccer like there's different avenues have you noticed that where you're like this kid's trying really hard I think he would probably be next to me with a book and that's probably better suited for him. I'm with you totally. Like that's something we should talk about. Like we do this, Adam, because, because you just never know what sport it's going to be. You know, if every, everybody wants to be a a football player, say, or a basketball player, you know, like I I wanted to be a basketball player, but I didn't have the skills, man. I just wasn't good enough. You know, I just couldn't, I didn't, I didn't just, I wasn't tall. I couldn't jump. I wasn't that quick. I was not going to be a good basketball player. So it's like, I mean, I wasn't a great football player either. I, I needed something else, you know, did play baseball, but you know, you'd go as far as you can. So why not try those things? Like if you're, if you're fast and, and you've got some skills, you know, it might be baseball, it might be lacrosse. And all of a sudden you blossom and it becomes something that gives you joy and fulfillment. But like the next question I would have Adam is like, okay, how do we make baseball fun and interesting for, for young kids? Like, like, how do we build uh, an eight, nine, 10 year old game where it's, you know, it's just a little more, it moves faster. Kids get to hit the ball more, you know, are we pitching to them too early? Sometimes too many walks, it drags out. The parents don't want to sit through it. The kids get bored. How do we get the ball in play more? Those would be the questions I think would be next level questions that I would ask like USA baseball and guys like that to make it kind of, inst- and how do we build like little fields? Like when we played, we played next door when we were, in the elementary school in Iowa, we had an open lot next to our house that we made our own field. How do we go and put little fields in little areas, you know, like say in the city, say we, say we did this, Adam, I just brainstorming. Say that we, we bought up some, some empty lots in, in Baltimore. And we said, we're going to make these into little mini parks. We're going to put little baseball fields out there. We'll put a little cross goal out there. We'll put bases out there. We'll kind of get it that way. And maybe we can raise some money to have to take care of them. And just let the kids go play in that area. You know, could we do something like that without it getting, without it, you know, and keep it up and keep it safe? I mean, I don't know. That's the type of stuff I, I would like to think people would, would be thinking about, you know? That was the 90s, 80s and 90s Parks and Recs. It, yeah. And I grew up in that situation. You know, you go to, you used to go to Willie Henderson Park and you feel safe. Your friends are there. Everybody's there. All the, all the kids, good and bad and different. We're all just up there hanging out, playing basketball, playing baseball. Uh, playing football, playing soccer, just but just up there around uh, in a safe space. And um, now that I think we need to talk to the mayor and governor about because that that's a allocation of funds issue. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Coach, you're a very eclectic guy. I mean, you like Taylor Swift songs, even though sometimes <laughs> you won't admit it out loud. Uh, you follow different sports. You follow politics. Have you thought about post career aspirations? Maybe even going into politics because what you were just saying has a political aspect to it. Would you vote for me, Jerry? That's the question. You would get my vote. I don't care what party you run in. You would get right. my unequivocal vote. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't think so. But I, I, I mean, to me, it's <laughs> like coach. My brothers, coach as long as you can until they get rid of you. Then, then just kind of see what's next. That's kind of as when you play, right? You play until they throw you out. Coach until they throw you out. Hopefully, you got something else you can do. I, I really want to do. You know, as it, as we go, I mean, I want to win a couple more Super Bowls here. You know, and, and have the Baltimore fans get a chance to enjoy that you know we've been right there right there right there and i think that's been great really want to bust through with a team be so good that it really doesn't matter that we just make it so good we're so good that we can overcome anything we can overcome not you know a couple turnovers we can overcome not being able to run the ball or not being able to pass it or whatever we're just that good of a team across the board that we just it doesn't matter that's that's the goal and that's kind of what we're working for every single day and then after that Really, you know, locally, then something maybe that people could look at and say, this is something that could could be copied. Let's look at Baltimore. You know, let's look at Baltimore and Baltimore County and Howard County. And let's let's start doing everything we can to continue to tie it all together and create opportunities for kids, you know, so they have a chance to to really experience things. Just experiencing things is so different. Experience a great education, certainly, and then experience uh, events and opportunities like you said adam to play other sports do other things play learn how to play an instrument 
Mm -hmm. All those different things that people can, they don't look back 30 years from now and just say, I never got to do anything because we didn't have this. or I never got exposed to that. I never got taught how to fish. I never, I never saw a horse before. I mean, these are the kind of things that just kind of break your heart, you know, when you think about it. And to me, we, we, as a, are older, as old, we're older now, we're adults now. Like to me, that's our job. That's our obligation to create the best life we can, the opportunities for kids that we can. That's kind of where my heart's at. More coming up on the Adam Jones Podcast, but first, a word from our sponsors. The Adam Jones Podcast is brought to you by our friends at the Wineman Company. Everyone knows Green Mountain Station in Hampstead, but did you know that at Green Mountain Station, you can bet seven days a week just like you're at the track? With in-person teller windows and state-of-the-art touchscreen kiosks. And with Green Mountain Station's brand new Bet Park Sports Book, you can bet on all other sports as well, wherever you are in Maryland. Spreads, money lines, live bets, props, parlays, and teasers. The Bet Parks Maryland mobile app is now live for Apple and Android devices, so you'll never miss your next big score. Just search for Bet Parks MD in the Apple App Store or on Google Play. And for a limited time, 21 and over Adam Jones podcast listeners can get a $75 gift card to Greenmount Station simply for opening a new account with promo code GMS and a minimum $50 initial deposit. $75 gift card for new users in Maryland only. 21 and over only. Please play responsibly. For help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. The Adam Jones podcast is brought to you by Jimmy's Famous Seafood. Charm City's favorite crab cake destination. Local sports fan? Experience the ultimate pregame party at the tailgate. Cheer on the Ravens with iconic live performances, an open bar, and mouth-watering eats. Can't make it? No worries. Bring the same food that caught the attention of the Food Network right to your doorstep. Shipping East Coast recipes nationwide. Jimmy's Famous Seafood is the official sponsor of the guests appearing on the Adam Jones Podcast. It might be an 11. Maybe a nine. It could be 13's time. Or five. With new cash pop from the Maryland Lottery, a winning number is drawn four times a day. Just pick a number from one to 15 for a chance to win cash. Like the $2,500 top prize. Cash pop. Cash pop. Put a little pop in your day. If you received ERC funds, listen closely. The IRS has 10 years to audit your claim, but you only have until March 22nd to get taxpayer relief, and the clock is ticking. If you're losing sleep over a possible audit, we'll review your claim. If you made a filing error, we'll set things right. If you're being audited, we'll provide expert representation. The IRS Voluntary Disclosure Program ends March 22nd. You deserve peace of mind. Visit SaveMyERC.com to schedule a consultation today. That's SaveMyERC.com. Effective Solutions, your one-stop shop for commercial contracting. Everything from excavation and site development to emergency remediation and restoration. Effective Solutions specializes in many forms of commercial and mixed-use construction. With a dedicated staff and a commitment to quality, Effective Solutions delivers every time. There are a lot of ways to make whiskey, but there's only one way to make Jack Daniels. At Jack Daniels, they charcoal mellow every drop, only using water from Cave Spring Hollow in Tennessee. When you make your own label, you make everything else yours too, but we don't need to tell you that. Do we? Make it count. Jack Daniels. Please drink responsibly. Tennessee whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Jack Daniel Distillery, Lynchburg, Tennessee. Jack Daniels and Old Number 7 are registered trademarks. 2022 Jack Daniels, all rights reserved. The Adam Jones Podcast welcomes Relief Shop. Shop Maryland's largest adult use and medical cannabis menu located at 1114 Cathedral Street in Baltimore with medical delivery available throughout Maryland seven days a week only at Relief Shop. Your fun awaits at Hollywood Casino Perryville. Feed the whole crew with something for everyone from cheesesteaks to crab cake sandwiches. Plus, ask how you can get a $15 dining credit. Get in on the gaming action with the hottest slots and your favorite table games like blackjack, roulette, and poker. Free live shows every Friday and Saturday. Come experience non-stop fun and excitement only at Hollywood Casino Perryville. Hey, Baltimore. Monument City Brewing has been crafting the best beer in Maryland since 2014. Located at 1 North Haven Street in Baltimore, you've seen us at the ballpark. Now drop by our tasting room. Open Thursday through Sunday with events, music, and great food trucks. And this year, we are honored to collaborate with Adam Jones and the Adam Jones Podcast with Simply AJ Ballpark IPA, available throughout the baseball season. It's going to be a great year, Baltimore. Visit us online at MonumentCityBrewing.com or follow us on Instagram at Monument City Brewing. Hey, you work hard, I work hard, and we all like to save money. That's why we need the Royal Farms Rofo Rewards app to get more value for our hard-earned money. With the app, you earn royalty points on every purchase, can place mobile orders for quick pickup, plus a discount at the gas pump with Rofo Pay. We all like to save money. 
And with the Rofo Rewards app, we do. Real fresh, real fast. Royal Farms. It's the perfect time to check out a spacious and reliable new Toyota SUV. Like a RAV4, with available all-wheel drive and plenty of cargo space, you'll go from errands to adventures in no time. Plus, available features like wireless charging will keep you connected. Or check out a Highlander with seating for up to eight. It's a hub for family adventure. Your Toyota dealer is getting new vehicles in stock regularly. So don't wait. Find deals on a RAV4 or Highlander at buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. The Bay Sox are in town June 18th through the 23rd, and fireworks follow Friday and Saturday night games. It's Educator Appreciation Week, so school employees can get two free tickets by showing their school ID Tuesday through Friday. Sunday is one of our big bobbleheads of the season, the Adley Rutschman Grayson Rodriguez Dual Bobble, featuring both players walking off the field together after another 1 2 3 frame. Get tickets at BaySox.com. And now back to the Adam Jones Podcast. You know, we were talking about this before you came on. We've got the Manning brothers and their broadcast. We got the Kelsey brothers and their podcast. And then you got the Harbaugh brothers. One has a Super Bowl, the other's got a natty. So who is the first family of football? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tell you, there's some great families in football, Jerry. Uh, we're the, we're probably ahead of them in coaching, you know. Um, I would say they're ahead of us in playing because I'm the one that was creating the drag. You know, they got two brothers that actually were great players in the NFL. We have one who was a great player in the NFL. And then we got one who was, you know, a dud when it came to being an NFL player. So I can't, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely holding the hardballs back in the playing category. That's for sure. I want to switch it to baseball real quick. And just like athleticism, you obviously pay attention to what's going on with the, with the Orioles, you and Elias and Sig have a very good relationship. I'm sure you guys text and see what's going on, uh, pick each other's brains. This kid Gunnar Henderson, if you were to pick somebody in the NFL or in your team, anybody, who would be somebody that emulates Gunner? Gunner Henderson, that's such a great question. And you probably have a really good answer for that. And I'm going to have to think about somebody. How about, I don't know, I'll just throw this one out there off the top of my head. How about like Cooper Cup? Mm. Is that a good one? Jerry, I don't what know do what think? his age is. Aggressive. He's a little older, but. Once he's, the ball. he's an older guy. Yeah, it's not. I, I, I kind of was thinking like the type Again, of athlete. But here's the thing: you can go any color too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right you can some pick right, some black right. dudes too. I would have yeah. said Lamar, but that's just my idea. Lamar, Gunner, Lamar. But how does the court? How's the position compare? Oh, he's like, a great shortstop. That, shortstop, quarterback. You're kind of running the show. He's running the show. He does a hell of a job of running the show. Um, can um, throw the ball from all angles. Yeah, runs that's the bases. Really good. Okay, I'm going Lamar. Yeah. <laughs> I think that makes sense to me. <laughs> Made it very difficult there. Hey, I, well, I want to go guys, outside of football. You guys, you guys are so much better at that than me. I mean, like, I mean, I, I just think baseball is such a skill sport. Like the ability to do the things these guys do: a shortstop, a third baseman, to be back in the hole, to make that throw, to have that kind of arm strength. Which I know because I did play baseball. That is sick, crazy talent. Just to make a throw like that. That's oh, yeah. a whole other level of talent. And you know how it is. Like guys would say, you know, he's a, he's a ball player. The guy, you respect the guy because he's actually a ball player. And he's, you know, a guy can actually play and have those skills, but you got to have a ridiculous amount of talent to play baseball. I mean, there's a reason why these guys make the money they make. Don't you Gunner's think, from Adam? Selma. He's from Selma. Like he's born and bred. He's a lumberjack. Yeah. He's born and bred to play baseball. A big, now. strong guy. I mean, yeah. Big and athletic. strong. Yeah. Can't throw a football like Lamar, though. I don't think. We haven't seen him try it just to. yet. All right. Uh, every once in a while, I'm going to go outside football during this podcast. Uh, I want to ask you, because I don't think anyone else has. Did you watch the Tom Brady roast? What was your reaction to it if you did? And did you ask Coach Belichick if he enjoyed participating? <laughs> I did. I did ask him that. And uh, he didn't really give me a, a full answer on that. He mumbled something. Um, I thought he was really good. And he said he kind of mumbled. He goes, "Oh, good writers, good writers." <laughs> so that was that was kind of funny in itself. Um, yeah, I, I only watched a couple of clips. I, I watched the highlights. I didn't. It wasn't something I wanted to watch. To be honest with you, I wasn't too impressed with it. You know, if I just being honest, it's not something I would watch. It doesn't entertain me. Uh, that's it. That's all. You I would say. never put yourself in that position down not the road. Not in a million right? years. Not in a million years. It's not something I'd be interested in doing. Yeah, I didn't think it was your cup of tea. Yeah. I know you have said it's an honor playing on Christmas in Houston this year, but coach, to be on the road for two straight years on one of the holiest holidays of the year, 
one that's big for you, obviously, in your family. It's unprecedented for any team. Did you ever speak to the league about this? Because you guys haven't hosted a Monday night football game. I'm sure you're aware since 2021. That's also an issue around town. Yeah, I think since I've been here, 22 of those games and 18 of them have been on the road. Uh, so, yeah, no, I have noticed that. I have I have mentioned that to the league about the Monday night games. Didn't say anything about the Christmas game just because uh, they. I, I'm quite sure at this point it didn't matter. Uh, we'll just go play it. Um, the main thing we want to think about right now, Jerry, is going to win the game. You know, and you're going to be playing Houston. They're going to be all fired up. The crowd's going to be crazy just like they were in San Francisco, just like they were in Pittsburgh three or four years ago when we had, we had to go there and play on Christmas Day. Uh, you know, we also played in Pittsburgh on a Wednesday. So we got both of those covered this time, Christmas on Wednesday. How about that? Um, but you really, I don't care. And, you know, and, and like Lamar said, no, none of us care. We're just going to go play them. I mean, yeah, we're playing three games in 10 days, but so are our opponents. Mm -hmm. So that puts us on equal footing in our minds. They have to, whoever deals with it better is going to be the team that wins the game. And that's our job is to go win the game. I think all those other conversations are definitely like worth having. I appreciate you bringing it up. You know, you definitely have a platform to do that and, uh, you know, whatever. But for us, man, we just got to go win the games. When the schedule comes out, how much analyzing do you do besides looking at the dates and times in terms of the opponent when you're playing them? Is there analysis and analytics that go into that portion? Yeah, well, I try to look at just – we try to look at just the the, uh, the rest, the travel, uh, you know, what, what it's going to mean for each particular game. Like, are they coming off a bye week? Are they kind of, do they have a long week? We have a short week. You know, what kind of disadvantages – you know, we take the advantages and we kind of just go, well, you know, that's fine. But the disadvantages, we definitely we definitely look at a little more closely. But everybody's got pluses and minuses in their schedule. So it is what it is. How awesome has this been able, you know, the last couple of years to share this with your father? Now your brother is back in the NFL. Uh, you guys going to go clash against each other again. But how awesome is it for your dad? Now, you know, he's retired. He gets to go back and forth and just enjoy his kids. He, uh, my dad and mom both, Adam, you know, they just, I think they've had like the best life ever. He, my dad, he says, you know, who's got it better than us? Nobody. Nobody. I Nobody. think he means like, who's got it better than me? You know, I'm a <laughs> football coach. He's got two kids who are head coaches now in the NFL. He watching tape. I just talked to him yesterday. He was, he's getting mommy about the offensive line technique in practice and I needed to straighten it out. Uh, you know, so, I mean, who's got it better than Jack Harbaugh? That's, that's definitely the fact of the matter. And, and the fact he's got Jackie, you know, that makes it perfect for him. So I just feel like you're right. They and they're healthy, Adam. I mean, they're just uh, they're just healthy. They're they're in their 80s and they're still traveling. They're still up and about. They're still you know, you know, just being themselves with each other and having uh, doing what they do. They argue or not really argue, but my dad annoys my mom sometimes, and, and they go <laughs> back at it. But it's just it's fun to be around them. How about your parents? Uh, well, my mom passed a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah, we both did. And uh, my dad, he's in L.A., outside L.A. So just living, old military guys. And yeah. Uh, yeah, he's, he's living and fishing a lot. How was he like with when you played? Like, what was it like? Was he watching every game? And did you hear from him? And did he, did he kind of talk to his buddies and pals about it and brag a little bit and all that? It was more my mom and stepdad on that uh, side of it. Okay. Uh, I didn't grow up too closely with my dad, so it was more of my mom and stepdad. And uh, yeah, every and every night, my mom would send me a message, good, bad, and different. Get them tomorrow. Uh, my stepdad, depending if we if we're in a long slump, he'd send a long message like, "Hey, you guys need to get back on it." But it was always good to have your parents' eyes on you. You know, to, you know, there, there's always going to be scrutiny around it. But there's always going to be that person that is your parents that always wants you to be better than them, and uh, that was always a good coming off the field getting that message. That's what it's about. And coach, you were so blessed to have both of your parents still around in great health, knock on wood, and be able to see both of their kids and all their children succeed in life. Yeah, I uh, know. Yeah, it's just, it's a, I don't know. We've just been blessed with a great family, you know, and and it hadn't been perfect. And there's been different things that have happened. You know, there's been different tragedies and disappointments, but through it all, you know, having family is is pretty darn pretty darn great, you know. And I, I just think it's a blessing. Sometimes it's a family that you're, you know, you're born with, and sometimes it's a family that you kind of acquire, and uh, and they, and and the, the common denominator is love, you know, and and when you, and that's the one thing that you know when you have it, and it gets expressed different kind of ways sometimes for sure. Not everybody expresses it in a way that sometimes when you're younger you can't understand it, but you look back and you go, wow, you know what? I kind of can see it now. I understand how that love was expressed at that time, you know, and 
And uh, yeah, I'm just grateful for when that happens, you know, whatever way it happens for me. And I added me on Nick until you feel the same way. And Jerry, you, you too. I know you and your mom, you know, so. Yeah. Well, staying with that theme of family, uh, for all intents and purposes, the Chargers have become the Ravens West uh, from their offensive coordinator. They took someone out of the uh, front office. They got the backfield. And, of course, the head coach is your brother. I just want to know how careful you have to be because in the past, you and Jim, for the last mm -hmm. few years, have talked about what's going on on your end of things. Now that he's a part of the NFL once again, do yeah. you have to you know, be very careful and, and tight walk when discussing things? Of course, of course. And I'm, I know he's the same way. And I can tell. I know him well enough to know that when I'm getting the full story and when I'm not, you know, when he's <laughs> or when he wants something, you know, I, I can usually tell. Usually the third question that gets asked is the thing he really called for. That's how it is with anybody. That's my dad's rule. Uh, but, you know, yeah, there's no doubt. I, we're playing each other. We're not going to give each other the secrets. You know, there's just like we and I'm sure that I'm sure he's picking dad's brain. You know, how their tape look, you know, what do they look like? And. Uh, of course, I would never do that and try to. Try to <laughs> <get dead grades. laughs> it's uh, it's different. You're right. You're right. Um, being able, I mean, obviously, you know, one of the smartest guys in the game, in my opinion, especially with scouting and judgment of character and talent. Um, having Sig and Sig Mydell and Mike Elias in your draft room, yeah. what similarities does baseball does, do they bring? or add to what football has like i think our scouting might be different but there's definitely similarities in uh in judging talent no question i i was i was kind of intrigued by that quick story so i didn't realize they were they were there honestly until about 10 picks into the draft and uh, like eric goes you know uh sig and mike are over there and i'm like where he pointed back in the corner it was only like 15 feet away and i'm like oh wow you know that's really cool and we were just kind of biding our time. We were waiting and watching guys all come off the board. We had our plan, but we weren't picking until, you know, late. So it was just a matter of, well, let's see what's kind of there for us. So, so I went and got a, uh, you know, a snack and I came back around. I went over and sat next to him and they were sitting near a couple of our analytical guys. And, and they were just kind of listening and our guys were kind of just doing their thing. Not much was being said. So I, I felt like, I don't know, I asked them a couple of questions and they were talking a little bit about, like you said, the numbers part, because I think in baseball, the numbers are really the main thing, it seems like, as far as making some of these judgments. And I, I wanted to point out uh, with uh, Derek Yam and, and, and uh, those guys that were sitting over there, hey, our guys are look, pulling these numbers right now. We've already done all these studies and all these guys are going off the board and whatever. And so all of a sudden, I kind of put them together. And the next thing you know, it was like, <laughs> and they were all in there talking back and forth and this, that, and the other. And I'm kind of just sitting there like listening to them. And they're like, uh, they're kind of looking at me like, don't you have anything better to do? And I'm like, not really, not until we get a few more picks off the board here. We're just kind of waiting to see what happens. Uh, and then it started working down where the corners started looking like they were going to be available because those linemen went, the quarterbacks went, their defensive guys were all still there. And it kind of, we kind of, kind of said to him, man, man, we may, a corner might fall to us here. Wouldn't that be crazy? And then Yam started doing his numbers and Dave McDonald on uh, what, you know, possibly the chances were that, and then for the rest of the time that they were there, they were with those guys and they were crunching numbers over there and asking those questions. So I think our guys learned a lot from them in that process too, just like while we were waiting for the draft to unfold. Uh, for football to me, Adam, it's like the numbers are important, but the tape, what you see with your eye is really the main thing. In baseball, I would ask, I think the tape and what you, or when you watch a guy play, especially in person, you see the old time scouts, I'm sure that's still very important. It has to be. How big does he really look? How long? all that, how explosive, but then maybe the numbers become more the overriding factor. It seems like true. But they're still both in there, right? Very true. Yeah. A lot of it is, is left the old adage of, you know, you got the old grumpy guy in the, you know, in the stands that, that is left. You can tell where the scouts were. Uh, a lot of that is left. There's obviously with the video. Um, I, I still believe that I test, like you still want to see how big the guy is. Like you say, mm -hmm. Oh, this guy is powerful and do this. I want to put his hand up against somebody's hand that's big enough. I want to see the size. That's why the NFL and your measurements and the combine with baseball now, mm -hmm. they measure exactly. So you get to the guy says he's 6'5", eh, 6'3 and a quarter is mm -hmm. what we got you at. So, right. uh, you know, you see it with, uh, with, Bronny Jun with Bronny Jr. You're saying he was 6'4 in college, now he's 6'1 and a half. Like, these measurements matter, and that's why you need to be up front and you need to be to see these guys and you need to – touch the guy, grab his shoulders and be like, Hey, 
I'm about to give you five million dollars. I need to put my hands on you and see uh, what I'm putting my what I'm putting my investment into. That's exactly 100 percent agree with that. Don't you go through some of that during the uh, combine and during the interviews before the draft? You do. You get a chance to see him in person. I and mean, when you see a guy in person, and then when you see him work out in person and you see, OK, he's a big guy that really moves uh, that that helpful. Yeah. I want to ask you about the uh, evolution of Lamar Jackson. We talked to you earlier about Derrick Henry, uh, who you hope will end his career as a Raven. Uh, obviously, we feel the same about Lamar. Uh, how has he changed? He's obviously a lot wealthier. He's won two MVPs, but he's got to be starving like you to get back to another Super Bowl. He's talked about that since the day you drafted him. Definitely. hundred percent agree with that. Uh, nothing's changed in that sense. Still the same person he always was. Yeah. More mature, uh, more weathered. You know, we all go through stuff. You get scarred, right? That's, that's a good thing. And that's a tough thing, but a good thing, you know, because scars heal and make you stronger. And uh, he's definitely got that. He's more, he's, he's just, he's just, He's five, he's six years into this thing. That experience factor is a massive part of it. I think with that comes kind of a practicality of, you know, understanding that goes with it. And yet five years from now, he'll even be more weathered that way, just like we all will be. But he's still the same humble guy, still the same fun guy. Guys love him in the locker room. They love being around him. Yeah, he's, he's Lamar, you know, and uh, very determined, very motivated guy. You know, uh, hey, life, man, he's got more responsibilities and obligations too than he had when he was 21. So, all that, all that factors in, but love him. Uh, I think our fans love Lamar. I hope they do. They should. Uh, you know, I, I just really want it for him. I really, really want. I really want that Super Bowl for all of our guys. You know, but Lamar being, I just want to see him earn that experience, it, live with that, be able to live with that for the rest of his life. Obviously, he's a two-time MVP. Where does he grow from here? Like. <laughs> Oh, he can yeah. do everything. Obviously, the Super Bowl is the epitome, and that's where, you know, the, the team go. But how does he get better? You know what? And you know this, and that's a great question. I know you know the answer is that uh, from a pure football standpoint, there's always room for growth. And when you step back and you, and, you, and you lean into that, you see that there's massive opportunities for growth. That's just what a growth mindset is. And so the opportunity to what we're trying to do with the offense, within the offense to operate, throws that he can make reactions you can make, uh, uncovering a defense, all those type of things that go with playing the quarterback. He'll say he'll say all of it. That's probably what his answer would be. And you know what? That's exactly right. He's got so much growth in all of it. And then the ability to carry a team, you know, you carry a team on Sunday. You also carry a team into Sunday, you know, carry a team throughout the course of the season, through all the highs and lows. Uh, that's that's the, another level that he's definitely growing into. Hey, Coach, uh, one thing you have done – and a masterful job is keeping the Ravens off hard knocks. They were the first team ever on hard knocks, as you know, after winning the Super Bowl. I don't know if you've done a masterful job in avoiding, in avoiding that program, but I don't know how you, much. You, you, assume, you assume I don't want to be on hard knocks, Jerry. Is that that it? is an assumption. So do you want to be on hard knocks? And do you ever watch and gain any intel by observing that show? And maybe that's the reason you don't want to be on hard knocks, even though you have editorial control. You know what's crazy is I never watched that show. I've never watched it. I mean, I'm not saying I'll see a clip or two here. Someone said, did you see Hard Knocks last night? And they'll show me a clip. And I'm just like, you know, I just think it's just not real. I mean, people think it's real, but it's not real. You know, it's it's everything's put on. I mean, anybody, you got to put a microphone and a camera in your face. People aren't the same. Um, if I don't mind, if they want to bring Hard Knocks in here, I wouldn't it wouldn't bother me one bit just because I know that I would tell, what I'll tell our guys is, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to just be us. We're going to say what we say. We're going to do what we do. We're going to, we're going to we're handle it the way we handle it because we got we got nothing to be ashamed of. And we're not trying to put on a show or an act for anybody. And we do have final <laughs> – we better have final editing power on the whole thing. I think they do. But really, I mean, our guys handle themselves in a professional way. I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind the world seeing that at some point. But I also do think it's a distraction because you got a camera in your face. You know, the office, right? It wasn't real. They really weren't in the office. That was put on and made up. <laughs> so there's always going to be some acting that's going to go on in that type of scenario. And, you know, I just want our guys to get the most out of the day and become the best team they can be. That's got to be a little drained, don't you think, Adam? Oh, the big time. Yeah. Big time. All right, man. What else you got, Jerry? Got Before we get back to work here. <laughs> Adam, uh, do you, I have one final one. I mean, I, I, all right, let me go with this. Uh the Players Association talked about eliminating organized team activities and just beginning with training camp. 
I know you've talked about it a little bit, but back in the day, you recall that players would just show up and get in shape during training camp. Is one of the reasons really for organized team activities for, it's kind of like the NBA, I think, when they have a shoot around in the morning, they just want to make the players available, make sure they're in good shape, sober, et cetera. That's the NBA. For the NFL, is it kind of a barometer to make sure the guys are in shape at certain portions of the offseason, coach? Well, uh, it's uh, very valuable. The, you're talking about getting shape in training camp. That's when they started training camp July 4th, right after July 4th. So they were there were six preseason games. They were in training camp through through the whole month of July, and, that, and they had one mini camp, a mandatory mini camp, usually like in May. So um, – they had a ramp up period and a time to really get in shape. Most of the guys came back in shape. My brother was in that. I remember going to see him in Platteville when he was with the bears and they would, they would, he was always in great shape. So he trained the whole off season, but he didn't have the organized team activities. What they did was they shorted train, they shortened training camp. And then they put the OTAs in there as a voluntary type thing. And then one of those CBAs way back when, because you didn't want guys to just show up and have a short training camp and not be ready to play. And then you'd have an injury. You'd have just, you'd have an injury fest. So, that's what you have to find. Like they're, they're talking about now going to a longer training camp. It would, if, for me, a ramp up training camp, which would not be every day, Jerry, it'd probably be three, four days a week to start with and kind of build up into it. And then probably get a week off like in June, week off in July as they did it. That'd be great because you'd ramp up and you would like baseball, you have spring training and you'd work your way into shape and you'd, you'd kind of like roll right in there. If you had a soft tissue injury, you'd have time to recover right now. You come and you get a soft tissue injury week two of training camp, you're kind of messed up. You you miss everything, you know. Mm-hmm. And then also all the teaching that we do with the rookies. But I would say that so you got to have it be mandatory. And then if you, you still want to make things available in the offseason for guys that want to come work out, I would pay them to do that. Uh, just like the rookies should come in and get paid to do that. Uh, uh, you'd have a training, uh, uh, you know, fitness and training, conditioning, weightlifting and all that. That would be, you know, voluntary, say, called a down period or something like that. That'd be my thinking on it. But with that being said, uh, I just appreciate the union and the, and the league are talking about it. Players, I'm sure, will weigh in on it big time. And whatever they say, coaches, that's what we'll do. Does that mean more off time for you? More more off time? Yeah, more, if they start training camp a little later and get rid of the OTAs. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it would be earlier. It would be, you'd probably have the month of May maybe, you know, to go – How's, how's, how's Florida in May? You know, it's pretty nice, right? Yeah. Well, a little humid, but I go to spring training. I've, I've been mad. Maybe I'll go to spring training in April. I, I've always wanted to do that. So I get down there with the Orioles in April. That'd be great. There We'd go. love to have you down in Sarasota coach. It's been our privilege to have you on the podcast. I know people Thank are you. telling you, you got to go. So you got to go. And thanks for being here. Be great being with you guys. Always a joy. Always a joy. Thank Adam, you. We're, we're going to do this coaching Academy stuff. Okay. Hey, I'm available. Coach says, and if, I'm you, there. if you need a podcast host, I'll send you my resume. <laughs> you got it. All right. Thanks, Thanks coach. That'd be great. Thanks, guys. We'll see you. We continue here on the Adam Jones podcast, our For the Birds segment, always sponsored by our friends at the Maryland Lottery. Hey, when you play the Maryland Lottery, set limits, never play when you're stressed, and know your odds of winning. To learn more, visit mdlottery.com slash play responsibly. Must be 18 years or older to play. And during this week's For the, For the Birds segment, Adam, I want to talk about avoiding collisions in the outfield and the infield. And yes, Mm -hmm. you do drills in spring training and maybe occasionally are reminded about it during the regular season. But based on the great instruction I got from my little league coach, because I go way back to little league and that's where I was a Mm -hmm. big star in right field. He told me the center fielder and the shortstop are the captains of the infield and outfield respectively. And you have to give way to them. Is is that still the case? The rule of thumb? Well, I believe Yes, for sure. That is still the case in rule of thumb. Um, now, obviously, there's tons of guys who, uh, you know, call off the ball and with shifts. And now there's just, you know, guys are a little bit more athletic with things like that. I think guys have always been. But, you know, the shortstop has the best angle, especially if, if the third baseman has to turn around at any point. The shortstop has a better angle, especially to his left. The center fielder has a better angle for everything. Um, but there's also certain things you got to pay attention to. If there's a play, if there's a man on second base and no outs and a fly ball to, to right center field and the right fielder has a better angle to throw the ball, the right fielder understandably should communicate this situation earlier and call that ball off and, you know, probably hopefully get off a better throw. So there's been many times where uh, I would talk to Mark Akis and be like, hey, this side is you because 
it would be understood that he would have a better throw going to third base. Me, I'd have to spin and do all this other stuff. So um, it's communication. If you talk to the players, you talk to your outfielders, talk to your defense, things happen. I would always talk to the shortstop in the middle infielder, Scopey and stuff like that, and JJ, like, hey, you know, I'm in right now, or I'll scream at him while I'm moving in. I'm in. Don't worry about me. Like, I'm coming in. So, you know what I mean? There's certain things you can do, but it's all about communication, and it's a constant thing of communication. It's not just we communicate on this play. No, it's throughout the game. It's throughout pitches. It's throughout outs. It's throughout every scenario because every single pitch creates a completely different scenario. So everything is fast moving. That's what people don't realize. You look at at bats. No, no, no. We look at per pitch and how things go off and all this kind of stuff. So you have to really, really pay attention to what's going on because the game on the field is way faster than people's Twitter fingers. What about in the infield, uh, the catcher, his role in the situation compared to the shortstop? Well, the catcher is in control of the pitcher. That's it. Um, that's it. I think now with the athleticism of the pitchers, you're seeing more pitchers go and catch uh, fly balls. And it's, me and Marquette has always laughed. You never want to do that. Me and him both <laughs> did that once in our career. And we text each other when we did it. It's the most embar- – a P1 uh, uh, is terrible. Uh, no, it's F1. So – um, but no, you just have to, you got to communicate, man. And, and and the communication part, especially the catcher, he understands that everything is running back to the field for him. With all that gear on, if a third or first baseman has an opportunity, please take it. And you see that. Um, you also see some catchers make hell of plays, but the catcher has a radius that he's used to. He has on gear. Let the other guys without gear go out there and uh, make those plays. Definitely want to avoid those collisions because sure. they can lead to serious injuries if you've seen in the past. Dude, hey, great story. So I was uh, I just got called up to Seattle and I played and this is my first of my debut. And I just told uh, I, was, I was going out there taking fly balls, doing all this. Each row comes to me and says, hey, hey, uh, don't hit me and wa- and runs away. I'm like. Anything to my left. This guy has already got five gold gloves straight at this point, 06. Anything to my left. And, hey, the match made in heaven. Yep, stay out of his way. Let him do his thing. All right, let's travel beyond Baltimore, national and sometimes international perspective brought to you by our friends over at Relief Medical Marijuana Dispensary, where they go above and beyond to help you, the medical patient. So we just spoke with Coach Harbaugh, and baseball, in my opinion, used to own the month of October. Heck, Reggie Jackson was named Mr. October for a reason. Uh, Now the sport does bleed into November a little bit sometimes. But some in baseball may argue that they still rule October. The ratings show the NFL is king. So how can baseball combat this going forward? Well, NFL is king. NFL is one day. So it's the Sunday that, you know, we do have playoff games. The NFL is going to rain, unfortunately. Uh, and that's viewership. Attendance, no. Attendance, is obviously, the crowd is a sellout crowd. Uh, any playoff baseball game should definitely, especially in fandom, I think should supersede the NFL uh, in the ballpark, I mean, for that day, because you have multiple games and opposed to a playoff game. Again, you, you never know where your team stands. If you're a Yankee or a uh, Dodger, you know, you're probably used to this. Phillies, you're used to this stuff. So you trade it off. So, yeah, the NFL, obviously, being that Sunday, is going to rule it. But I think in ballpark, baseball should rule. But during the week, that's when our ratings are. And obviously, um, what does stink about some playoff games, especially now that you have the wild card, you have a lot of games during playoffs, is that some of these games are at, you know, 3 o'clock, 1 o'clock. And it, those are very hard times for anybody. It doesn't matter who you are unless it's a weekend to get those times off. That's very hard for the working person and their kids to get off of school and all that kind of stuff. It's a treat. And again, that's really hard scheduling. Uh, as a parent, I understand that. Uh, we're still going to the game. But it, it, the Sunday part aspect, I, th- I still think playoff baseball is still loved. You know, it's, I think it's still loved. And to me, playoff hockey is the best to me. I mean, playoff hockey is nuts. I love playoff hockey. But playoff baseball is, is, is amazing. And again, I think that people get sidetracked from it because it's every day. We're an everyday sport. NBA and NHL. They play like you see the final schedule. It's like once every three days. I mean, this thing runs on for forever. Um, and how just how the finals and NHL schedules, they just run on and the playoffs run for two months. Um, and I think that's really long. And I think 
But with baseball, it's every day. It's a constant. It's like when you have a five-game series, you're playing five games in seven days, opposed to a five-game series in the NBA is five games over 12 days, roughly. So um, I just think that those those things right there, the, it's, the NFL is going to rain, but the yeah. MLB is coming. They don't have picture in picture anymore, but that's why you have multiple devices. So you can multitask and watch a baseball and football <laughs> game at the same time. 100%. All right, let's put a bow on tie on this Harbaugh episode with our socially speaking segment. This is where we answer a post from X. Also, Instagram and Facebook. We're not on TikTok. Uh, you have a chance to win a $50 gift card from Lido Pizza, who is a proud partner of the Baltimore Orioles. Again, we are at Adam Jones Pod on all the platforms and Typically, Jackson, our social media guy, will put out a question sticker via Adam where you can ask Adam almost anything within the boundaries of good taste, that is. And I guess Boombird Birdland, that's his handle at X, responded to Adam's with, what was your favorite moment, Adam, as a Seattle Mariner? This is a good one because um, yeah. it, was, it was a pinch hit appearance that I had. And when I got first called up, you know, you always think I'm going to play every day. That's just not how it, go, how it goes. And it was a pinch hit appearance against Alan Embry. And he's a veteran at this time. He's in his 13th, 14th year. I end up facing him when I get to Baltimore. And he tells me the story again. Hey, kid, you do you, you know, good at bat. Um, but it was eighth inning tie game. And no, I think we were down two to one. Yeah, because he's high leverage. And I had a game tying home run pinch hit bottom of the eight to right center. and. Uh, I just remember that moment. I mean, this is my, I think it's my second career home run, honestly. And I was just, I was juiced. 21 in September, I was just hyped for the situation. And, you know, uh, I didn't have many Mariner moments, but that is uh, one of them that obviously stuck out really, really profoundly on the offensive side. I gave you when Ichiro told me, don't run into me. Uh, yeah. So it was. <laughs> Uh, it was. It didn't have a long time there, but that was a great, great, uh, great, great situation. Both of those are great Mariner stories. Okay, at Emmanuel underscore E underscore Waters. That's a very interesting handle. He responded to your question sticker about who was your favorite baseball player of all time. Uh, all time. Um, I mean Tony Gwynn. Uh, I mean being from San Diego. Uh, that's just my guy. That's Mr. Always Padre. Been. Mr. Padre. He is San Diego baseball. He's in a class by himself when it comes to Padre baseball. And damn near, you know, he's in a very small class with Major League Baseball. Um, very good friends with the family. Yep. All of them with, with uh, Anthony and uh, Anisha and obviously the extended family. So just a fantastic, fantastic family. And uh when you think of Padres baseball, it doesn't matter. That's the first thought for me. And, you know, we missed the guy. I hit with him for 10 years, uh, off seasons. Once I signed, I hit with him every off season. Uh, only one I missed because, well, he missed it because due to, due to treatment. Um, but guy was a very, very special guy. And uh, the the stories that he had in the cage for us, it was it, those are you know, those are one of ones. And uh, what a great time we had with Mr. Gwynn. The guy was born with the bat in his hand and easily one of the five nicest athletes I've ever interviewed. Yeah, By and far. that's amazing because I'm sure he did not want to talk to you. No, he didn't, but he wrote an autograph to me. <laughs> Jerry, thanks for the hitting tips. You may be a better hitter, signed Tony Gwynn, as I dictated that autograph to him. It happens. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's thank our loyal sponsors are the ones that make the adam jones podcast go let's support these people the adam jones podcast is brought to you by our friends at the wineman company everyone knows green mount station in hampstead but did you know that at green mount station you can bet seven days a week just like you're at the track with in-person teller windows and state-of-the-art touchscreen kiosks and with green mount station's brand new bet park sports book you can bet on all other sports as well wherever you are in maryland spreads money lines live bets props parlays and teasers the bet parks maryland mobile 
mobile app is now live for Apple and Android devices, so you'll never miss your next big score. Just search for Bet Parks MD in the Apple App Store or on Google Play. And for a limited time, 21 and over Adam Jones podcast listeners can get a $75 gift card to Greenmount Station simply for opening a new account with promo code GMS and a minimum $50 initial deposit. $75 gift card for new users in Maryland only. 21 and over only. Please play responsibly. For help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. The Adam Jones Podcast is brought to you by Jimmy's Famous Seafood, Charm City's favorite crab cake destination. Local sports fan? Experience the ultimate pregame party at the tailgate. Cheer on the Ravens with iconic live performances, an open bar, and mouth-watering eats. Can't make it? No worries. Bring the same food that caught the attention of the Food Network right to your doorstep. Shipping East Coast recipes nationwide. Jimmy's Famous Seafood is the official sponsor of the guests appearing on the Adam Jones Podcast. It might be an 11. Maybe a 9. It could be 13's time. Or 5. With new cash pop from the Maryland Lottery, a winning number is drawn four times a day. Just pick a number from 1 to 15 for a chance to win cash. Like the $2,500 top prize. Cash pop. Put a little pop in your day. If you received ERC funds, listen closely. The IRS has 10 years to audit your claim, but you only have until March 22nd to get taxpayer relief, and the clock is ticking. If you're losing sleep over a possible audit, we'll review your claim. If you made a filing error, we'll set things right. If you're being audited, we'll provide expert representation. The IRS Voluntary Disclosure Program ends March 22nd. You deserve peace of mind. Visit SaveMyERC.com to schedule a consultation today. That's SaveMyERC.com. Effective Solutions, your one-stop shop for commercial contracting. Everything from excavation and site development to emergency remediation and restoration. Effective Solutions specializes in many forms of commercial and mixed-use construction. With a dedicated staff and a commitment to quality, Effective Solutions delivers every time. There are a lot of ways to make whiskey, but there's only one way to make Jack Daniels. At Jack Daniels, they charcoal mellow every drop, only using water from Cave Spring Hollow in Tennessee. When you make your own label, you make everything else yours too. But we don't need to tell you that, do we? Make it count. Jack Daniels. Please drink responsibly. Tennessee whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Jack Daniel Distillery, Lynchburg, Tennessee. Jack Daniels and Old Number 7 are registered trademarks. 2022 Jack Daniels, all rights reserved. The Adam Jones Podcast welcomes Relief Shop. Shop Maryland's largest adult use and medical cannabis menu located at 1114 Cathedral Street in Baltimore with medical delivery available throughout Maryland seven days a week only at Relief Shop. Your fun awaits at Hollywood Casino Perryville. Feed the whole crew with something for everyone from cheesesteaks to crab cake sandwiches. Plus, ask how you can get a $15 dining credit. Get in on the gaming action with the hottest slots and your favorite table games like blackjack, roulette, and poker. Free live shows every Friday and Saturday. Come experience nonstop fun and excitement only at Hollywood Casino Perryville. Hey, Baltimore. Monument City Brewing has been crafting the best beer in Maryland since 2014. Located at 1 North Haven Street in Baltimore, you've seen us at the ballpark. Now drop by our tasting room. Open Thursday through Sunday with events, music, and great food trucks. And this year, we are honored to collaborate with Adam Jones and the Adam Jones Podcast with Simply AJ Ballpark IPA, available throughout the baseball season. It's going to be a great year, Baltimore. Visit us online at MonumentCityBrewing.com or follow us on Instagram at Monument City Brewing. Hey, you work hard, I work hard, and we all like to save money. That's why we need the Royal Farms Rofo Rewards app to get more value for our hard-earned money. With the app, you earn royalty points on every purchase, can place mobile orders for quick pickup, plus a discount at the gas pump with Rofo Pay. We all like to save money, and with the Rofo Rewards app, we do. Real fresh, real fast. Royal Farms. It's the perfect time to check out a spacious and reliable new Toyota SUV. Like a RAV4, with available all-wheel drive and plenty of cargo space, you'll go from errands to adventures in no time. Plus, available features like wireless charging will keep you connected. Or check out a Highlander with seating for up to eight. It's a hub for family adventure. Your Toyota dealer is getting new vehicles in stock regularly. So don't wait. Find deals on a RAV4 or Highlander at buyatoyota.com. 
Toyota, let's go places. The Bay Sox are in town June 18th through the 23rd, and fireworks follow Friday and Saturday night games. It's Educator Appreciation Week, so school employees can get two free tickets by showing their school ID Tuesday through Friday. Sunday is one of our big bobbleheads of the season, the Adley Rutschman Grayson Rodriguez Dual Bobble, featuring both players walking off the field together after another 1 2 3 frame. Get tickets at BaySox.com. Thanks to senior executive producer Chip Franklin for putting this latest episode together. He's a chip off the old block with the emphasis on the word old. Go out and subscribe to the Baltimore Banner, folks. Until next week, be real, be kind, and make sure to be back for another edition of the Adam Jones Podcast.